Okay, so subsurface scattering, uh, the first thing we need to know is uh, what exactly is subsurface scattering? Um, and the easiest way to explain it is probably if I just draw on, on here. Normally, um, the material will allow the light to hit the object and then bounce off. Okay, um, with subsurface scattering, the light can actually hit the object but then go inside and scatter around and the distance that the light can travel through can be controlled by the uh, radius parameter of the subsurface scattering uh, material so just get rid of that uh, if the radius is high then the light can hit and then travel through sort of much further um, if the radius is low then the light can come in sort of travel and scatter a little bit but then it will be um, absorbed by the object so the longer one uh, will go all the way through and you'll see the effect of the light on the other side of the model the thin one will come in and if, it's, if, it, if it hits a thick part of the model um, then you won't see any effect anywhere um, whereas if the same light were to hit here with a low radius set then because that's a thin part of the model there, uh, you will still see the light coming through the object okay and the color of the light is uh, can be controlled by individual radiuses for red green and blue so the first thing to do then if we uh, select the object and then in the shader editor click on new material and in, it will by default give you a principal shader but the subsurface scattering can be uh, also created with the subsurface scattering node uh, which is it's got the similar parameters you've got your subsurface uh, radius here so they're on both materials you've got the color uh, which is here on, so you can got both of those but additionally on this uh, dedicated node you've also got the ability to blur uh, the incoming texture and also the ability to sort of scale all three of the values in here um, by the same amount uh, which you can do in the principal shader as well but it just takes um, a bit more setting up but it does give you more control so I'll use the principal shader and make sure we're in EV and turn on rendering mode okay so the material is applied I've got a background HDR light in the scene um, I'll turn on subsurface all the way up fully to one and you'll see we are getting sort of an effect sort of a, a softness on the model but we aren't getting any um, sort of glowing areas where the models thin and that's because EV doesn't support um, environment background currently uh, for subsurface scattering whereas if I switch to uh, cycles you'll see straight away we are getting the glowing effect on the thin parts of the geometry okay but we'll come back out of there back into EV so to achieve the same thing in EV what you need to do is add a light uh, either any well any of these lights will work so I'll go with the Sun I'll just rotate that around I'll move that down okay so we've got a sun in there but we're still not getting any of the sort of glowing effect on the thin areas of the geometry and the reason for this is uh, we need to with the object selected and with the mate subsurface material selected if you've got more than one uh, go down to the settings and you've got something in here called subsurface translucency so if you turn that on you'll get an effect, it's probably uh, just turn the world 
environment down so it's more obvious like that you can see now we are getting um, the glowing coming through on the thin parts of the model so I'll go back to the material okay and if I just show you if I turn this off got no effect then turn this back on down here then we're getting the effect now I mentioned earlier that the light can be controlled how far it passes through using the subsurface radius and also uh, you can control the distance individual colors can travel through so at the moment uh, the default is set up for 1.2 and 0.1 and these are actually uh, perfect for skin so if I was to change all of these to zero and then turn up the red you'll see only the red comes through turn up the green only the green comes through and so on so I'll put these back to default point, uh, 1.2 and point 0.1 for skin um, so the subsurface colour now this controls the colour of the inside of the object so if I change this to green then you'll notice that if I change the change all those to zero now if I change the red to one nothing is going to come through if I change the blue to one no effect if I change the green to one then you will get the effect and that's because the subsurface uh, effect can only come through if this color contains um, the color that you want to come through so if I bring this up and change that to RGB you'll notice that there's no red and no blue in this particular color whereas if I set all of these to one okay so now it's still in a green even though we've got all three red green and blue set to one to travel through and as I move the color around you'll notice we're starting to get a little bit of blue coming in so the blue should start to come through the more blue comes in there we are and if I travel round we'll notice the greens completely disappeared uh, the red is just starting to come in now and we so the red will start to have an effect the blues going down um, if you want all three then you would set this to completely white and then all three will come through and because all three are set to one then that will equal white as well so you need different values in here to mix into um, one color so 1.2 point 0.1 back to the skin color you will probably want to control the radius um, how far light can go through the object while still maintaining the same relationship between the colors uh, and to do that in Eevee and this might not work later because I, I, I think it could be a bug but if you add a value node you can then plug this into the subsurface radius which shouldn't work because that requires a vector um, which this is not but if you then use this value to change either higher or lower you'll notice that the effect can be controlled with with one slider and it will keep the same relationship in colors so turn that back up a little bit it's going through like that so what if you want the front of the model to be red um, the thick part of the air to be blue and this part the very thin part to be green well the way you would do that is in the subsurface radius we'll turn up the red so that's coming all the way through because it's got a higher radius and then with the uh, green we'll turn that until it's coming through the thick part of the air so that's high enough that value there now not 0.84 is high enough to travel through anything that's of, of uh, this sort of thickness from there but it's not traveling all the way through you'll still get a little bit here look because this from this side to here is quite thin 
and I still get a little bit here as well because that's uh, within range. Now if you want just the absolute thinnest part to be blue then you can go back in here and then you can change this radius so you can see there that's only affecting the very thin part. So that's the idea, the basic principle behind the EV subsurface scattering. Um, you can also achieve the same thing with cycles with the, that we achieve with the value um, using, it's a bit more of a complex setup, um, but all you would do basically is add a, a combine XYZ and that will give you a vector and then you plug that in. So even if I change, ah, one thing I think I forgot to mention, with EV, if these, these need to be set before you plug the value in. Because if these are all set to zero, for example, and I plug this in, then you'll get no effect, no matter what, what the distance is. And the reason is, this value is multiplying by whatever was in there before you connected this node. So you need to connect these up first. So 1.2 and 0.1. And now if you plug this in, then that will that will work. You can also give it a negative effect, which has quite an interesting uh, result. And actually, uh, if you turn off in the material settings, if you turn off the subsurface translucency, then that result is a little bit more uh, prominent. I'll turn that back on. So the negative result there, that, that's um, you know, it looks a bit more waxy. So that could come in useful for that sort of material. But really, you are supposed to keep it in, in the positive. Well, uh, anyway, so for the cycles to get the same result, you've got two options. Just unplug that. So option, the easiest option, is to use the subsurface node that I mentioned earlier. So the subsurface node there. Uh, the radius is set up by default. The skin value is the same as the principled. So if I plug this in here, get the same result. But then the, the scale value will do the same as the value did for EV. So if I change that to uh, 0.1, then only the thin parts of the material will be affected. Just around the inner parts of the air there. And it's worth mentioning as well, Cycles is used in the environment for uh, subsurface scattering as well. Um, so that's how you would do it with the subsurface scattering node. Uh, if you want to stick with the principal shader, then, as I mentioned, use a combine XYZ, which is a vector, basically. And it doesn't matter if these are set first. You can put all these to zero and then plug in the vector. And then you can control them individually with this node here. Um, on its own it's not much use because obviously you could have done that anyway uh, without plugging this node in. So what you would do is, or the way I would do it is add uh, three values, red, green and blue, and then uh, three math nodes set to multiply one for each of red, green and blue. Uh, plug the value in here in the top red, green and blue and then create another value and this will be the master multiplier so plug that in there, uh, plug it in here for the green and in there for the blue and then if I hook up uh, this to the red which is x, green which is y and blue which is z and because all these are the same value it's going to come out white but if I then change this to 1 0.2 and then 0.1 again then we're back to the skin 
uh, and I can increase the value using this slider and the reason that's um, helpful to know is because you can then do sort of uh, different effects you could rather than plug in a value in into the uh, blue for example or rather than try the green I could plug a, a Fresnel in so the effect would only be visible depending on camera angle for example so if I plug that in there and plug this into the value and you'll see that the value is dependent on the angle so uh, that's just an example though you can uh, you see there you've got the green only happening sort of when we're looking from the side or where the, where the angle is is quite narrow so that's just an example you, obviously you could use uh, you probably wouldn't do that you could use any other node though if you want some uh, strange effects um, and what else do we need to cover so we we'll go back to EV uh, plug that value back in uh, these are all set to zero currently so I need to set these up in here for EV so 1.2.1 1. and then control the value overall value with this Um, so what you could uh, run into another issue is if you start getting a grainy result and the graininess is controlled by the number of samples so I've just turned the samples down in the, re in the um, render options under subsurface scattering so you can see the result is quite a grainy um, effect to get rid of that all you need to do is increase your samples and if I increase that to 3 you'll notice it's a bit smoother but we're starting to get a strange sort of um, result inside you, get, you can see the contours of the geometry um, and uh, that's another cause of the samples being too low so if you increase the samples to something like 7 uh, then it, it gets rid of that for you Okay, and uh, the light as well also affects. So if I go into the sunlight and click on the settings for it, you've got the softness value. If I decrease this and zoom in, you'll see that the uh, edge of the scattering effect is quite pixelated, and that's in direct correlation to the softness here because it's basing the it's basing it on the shadows basically. Um, so the softer you go with the shadow, the lower the effect because the shadow is effectively becoming darker. Um, so a good value um, I find is around about three. Um, and I think that's probably all you need to know really. Um, if you'd like to um, like me to make a tutorial on, on making a full skin shader with all of the sort of uh, undersurface details like veins um, sort of cracks in the skin and things and let me know in the comments and I'll make that next okay thanks for watching